What's up, everybody? Back here for episode 79 of the Pitside Podcast. We've got a good one for you this week. We've got a first-time guest, our uh, multiple-time, we couldn't even count high enough to, to figure it out, but our multiple-time Roadrunners champion, Bob Light, is here, and previous or most recent Truck Series champion. And then we have the Money King, Kyle Moonen, is here, fresh off a uh, King of the Wing victory. So we're going to sit down and talk to the, both those guys here in just a minute. If you stay tuned, we'll get started. Welcome to the Pit Side Podcast, where we discuss the latest news and developments in the Coast to Coast Racing League, as well as other racing news inside and out of iRacing. Here's your host, the ALA outlaw, Preston Cranmer, and Roger, the bass man, Craig. Yep, so we're back. I uh, had another couple weeks between episodes here, but uh, it's been an eventful couple of weeks. Uh, just I think I mentioned a moment ago, we just wrapping up our King of the Wing charity event that was part of week 13. It went pretty well, I thought. I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was, uh, I think, especially like the short notice, it was uh, put together at the 11th hour. Uh, Osh Weekend Speedway was uh, generous enough to, you know, uh, cover our expenses. And uh, we've raised, uh, I don't have the final number, but it's around $500. Uh, so for a mini event, you know, a two-day event, that, that was the goal. Uh, that you know, actually a stretch goal, and uh, we achieved it. So uh, kudos to everybody that took part. It was that traditional thing of you know, it, I thought at one point we'd have to cancel it because we had nobody signing up, and uh, and then all of a sudden everybody just shows up, and we had over 50 drivers, and that was the target was get at least 50, and we had and we kept those in house, and that's what we will do uh, going forward. Is those are uh, you know a, a coast to coast racing league. Uh, you got to be in the league to. Uh, to run those so it was just in-house we knew we wouldn't get quite as many you know for numbers but um it was a great event and uh kyle moon and uh, the charity king uh <laughs> walk, walked away with it so uh uh kudos to him but uh, yeah it was it was a fun event and uh it it was a bit of a test and it was totally successful so um uh, going forward every week 13 there will be a, a charity event and we have something to announce on that uh you know Probably on our next podcast, there's something in the works for those. So, uh, good news thing. So it's it's pretty cool. Yeah, and I, I'm with you. I think I really like the the charity events when it's just kind of us. I guess is the best way to put it because yeah. it, yeah. it kind of doesn't count in some ways. I mean, everybody's out there to win. It's still very competitive, but there's less on the line. Nobody's out there running for championships for week to week kind of racing. So it, it is. A little bit lighter, I think, or yeah. at least for a lot of guys. So you get out there with somebody you're usually a little bit more aggressive with, and get to pal around yeah. and joke around in the chat beforehand and all that stuff. Well, well, I think the big thing too is yeah, you know everybody, right? Yeah. So it's uh, it, it's you know everybody's tendencies. It, it makes it a lot more predictable racing, and uh, um, yeah, and so yeah, it was good. And uh, we've got we we've, <coughs> we've got a great event planned. Uh, for mid-season, the Winter Nationals. I'm not, you know, we won't get into too many details. We we talk a little bit about that uh, with Kyle, um, but uh, yeah, great event. And then yeah, next week uh, 13, we've already got a few ideas, so it's uh, it, it should be another cool event. Yep, yeah, we'll we'll be looking forward to those. And so um, I'll ask now, the Winter Nationals. I, I know we're not releasing details on that. What what charity is that for, or can we not say yet? No, it, that that will be um, for um, childhood cancer. Uh, I think uh, I, I've really been moved by what uh, Olivia um, Olson does uh, for that thon. Uh, the timing will be just about right for that. Um, it, you know, you couldn't find a worthier cause, childhood yeah, cancer. Sure. My God. So um, it, that one will be uh, that. That's what that one will be for. And um, I, I and I'm really excited about about that and the event and the, you know the prospects of uh, uh how that's going to turn out so uh yeah well and like roger said we'll have we'll have more details in, on that in episodes to come maybe some next episode but they, that gets filtered out over time so just kind of keep your ears open for that it'll be on our facebook page as well um but uh in the meantime i think we should jump over and talk to our actual king of the wing um, and so we'll t we'll talk to Kyle here, and then we're going to jump straight to talk to Bob Light, and then Roger and I will be back to close yep. things up with a little bit more information here for you in just a little bit. Yeah. Two great interviews. 
Absolutely. Stick around. And and then stick around for us after. We got we got some cool stuff to talk about. For sure. And we are here with the Money King. And uh, very appropriate tonight, Kyle Moonen uh, is wearing uh, uh, Every Child Matters uh, colors there with the, the orange. It's kind of cool and very appropriate as uh, you are King of the Wing. And uh, that is Charity Victory number five, if I'm not mistaken. I believe it is. I would have to. Would he have just to looked look up at, at him, his trophies. Do you see that? Is, uh, yeah, yeah. He's got the trophies. <laughs> uh, I was. The, I had a couple of them sitting there, and then I've, I've got a couple uh, inside somewhere. So I was trying to think how many, but yeah, I think that was. Uh, I think that was number five. Well, yep. so so um, they're calling you the Money King, but and and you may be pissed off at me for saying this, but uh, if the truth be known. Uh, you've donated more than half of your winnings back to the charities. So in fact, you've got one trophy missing there because you said to donate the money for the trophy back to the, back to the thing. So uh, kudos to you, buddy. The, you know, that, that's, uh, that's huge. So you are the money King, but you're all, you're, you're definitely the charity King. <laughs> that's for yeah. sure. So, Hey, did, 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 the tr did you get the new trophy? Oh, uh, I did. I did get it. That uh, that's what one of them. I was looking to see if it yeah. if it was right here. It's inside. That was a uh, that was definitely a cool one. A little little different for sure. It's kind of make me wish I would have maybe got the the one for the world <laughs> finals just to to see how that was. But it's good uh, good to donate back to. So yeah, yeah. So the uh, so it is a cool trophy because uh, you know I, I never had it in my hands so. Oh yeah, yeah it is. It's nice. It's definitely nice and and heavy. So I'll uh, I'll send you a picture of it. I just got it. I don't know if it's today or yesterday. Yeah, I, I think I got in a message that it got delivered. So uh, um, yeah, you have to post it on the lounge for everybody to see because that's a pretty cool trophy. I was uh, just I'm not sure the size and stuff. You know, with when you order it, it's just uh, I think it was nine inches high. So I'm trying to get this, you know, the the idea of just how big it is. So yeah, uh, yeah, it was a decent decent size for sure. For sure, and you can tell it's not like a cheap plastic, yeah. you know. Yeah, that. So, yeah, very cool. Yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, hell of a hell of a charity run. Um, and uh, what really shocked me um, was Monday night we did that qualifying thing, but like you qualified, uh, you're not qualifying right at the end. Uh, you've uh, had some struggles here, I guess, not making as many races, but. Uh, um, and you didn't have a great start, I don't think, to uh, this week either, did you? No, no, I had a, I had a terrible start. Well, you to didn't, this you week, didn't, actually. you didn't transfer, did you? No, no, I didn't. I, I transferred. Didn't. I transferred yeah. to the Renegades. And yeah, that's why I was kind of, <laughs> kind of laughing about that. That too. It was, uh, it was not a good, good week. But you'll, uh, you'll have that. And I wasn't, I wasn't qualifying good tonight either at all. So. I need to turn some more laps at Lincoln and kind yeah. of get that place figured out qualifying wise. So how do how do you find Lincoln? Uh, first first uh, reactions to uh, race in Lincoln, other than other than the numbers we had, you know, which uh, we've discussed earlier. But uh, um, how did you find the track itself? Uh, I like the track itself, yeah. you know, quite a bit. It's just about like. You know, every I don't want to say it's a bull ring just because it does kind of have longer, longer straightaways, but the corners are really tight. It's just going to be something to get used to to slow down, you know, kind of like three and four in Williams Grove. You know, it, it seems to be you carry a ton of speed down down the back stretch there and need to get out early and kind of be prepared for for the guy in front of you. You know what it reminded me of a bit uh, when I started is weed sport. You know where you're going into what they call like a bowling alley, like it narrows down, and I think uh, and I, I think Hein on the broadcast was talking about that. The, the issue is that that corner narrows. You got guys coming low, drifting up, and you got the guys who are going high, cutting down. And I think that's where, you know, we we had as I mentioned earlier the 305s, five laps, five cautions. I mean, probably the first time a lot of guys were on the track, but they were all in turn two, and uh, it's just uh, it's a bit of a getting used to, I guess. You know, just like a weed sport, the way that that narrows down yeah yeah and for sure that's i didn't think about that one and two were uh pretty similar i would say at those two two tracks <clears throat> yeah 
But uh, other, you know, I'm not a fan of Weed Sport. I'll, I'll, I'll admit, but this track is cool. It's uh, there's multiple lanes, and I think a lot of guys has been been some really good feedback uh, about the track since uh, you know we tried it. Yeah, yeah, we had uh, there was a late model race. I think the day it came out, uh, that was quite a bit of fun. I forget who I was was racing with for that. Um, for the win, I think it was Dittmer maybe, but you know, that, that was a good race. I, I, I don't think there was a, was a ton of cautions or anything and, and good racing. So I think it'll get better once, uh, yeah, everyone figured out. Yeah. The, all, all three races, uh, tonight, the, the 305, 360, 410 settled down once we got through a few laps. And, uh, I think, yeah, once everybody gets used to it, it'll, uh, it's going to be a, 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 a great track, but Hey, never mind the, the dirt. Um, you found your way on the asphalt, buddy. You've been uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, last night, which was Tuesday night with the trucks. You probably would have had the win, but you got nailed on uh, the restart zone going what a couple miles too fast or something. It was actually, I think I looked at it and yeah, I was going like fifty nine when I should have been going going fifty five, and that's some I was talking on Discord and wasn't paying attention. <laughs> of the sign that's right in front of your face that says not to go not to go over that so i was one i was like what the hell did i i do because i didn't actually gun it you know right until basically the the green flag came out but on that uh that next restart i read it a little bit closer closer yeah. to that time. yeah yeah i i didn't even i wasn't paying good attention i guess and didn't realize you had a black flag i was trying to push you to the wind there at the end not realizing you weren't going to be able to get it anyway but yeah 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 it was it uh when i had that black sea it wasn't telling me um if i had to go under green at first if i had to pit under green or if i could pit under caution and clear it or if it was just a end of a race you know deal yeah. so i was kind of trying to see what it was until until it told me at least that and i think there were only seven or eight trucks on on the lead lap so i was just kind of <laughs> trying know. to hang out i know <laughs> it won't there. many it won't many i was uh, yeah. i was two laps down and almost finished top 10 so <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah but you know it, yeah it was uh i i think it was funny i, I were into the pavement stuff my uh cousin sean and one of my friends brad uh they're they're more into the pavement stuff during the winter you know during uh racing season they're they're pretty tied up with that but i've got got both of them racing and that's what we were kind of fighting about because my cousin sean uh he was racing up there for the for the win too and and kind of got in a wreck there at the end of it so, so what what's their full names sean uh sean grace and uh oh, brad right. Webb. okay yeah 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 so yeah. uh but uh yeah you've been killing it on the on the uh the pavement man it's just uh, uh well uh, actually the bandy boys have been uh you know moving up and uh i still see a few dirt moves out of uh lacy but i mean <laughs> it'll all get straightened <laughs> out in the end but it's uh it, it's really added another dimension to the league that's for sure and uh it, it's good to see some of the dirt boys up there uh you know making their names yeah. known on that side of course you're you're you are an old asphalt driver right like uh yeah yeah i've uh grown up around you know pavement my uh entire life we used to go my dad would take me to a track in michigan called butler um a little bit when i was younger you know before i turned 18 i bet i was there maybe five to ten times total and uh move to Lima and then you have Lima land, uh, you know, right, right down the road. And it was really pretty much, I would say a year or so before I got into I racing. Um, I started following, you know, the dirt stuff a lot more and then got I racing and, and it, uh, just kind of picked up, you know, from, from there, but I still do the, do the pavement stuff. We'll be, be racing some next year and, uh, kind of, kind of go from there. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, did you do any real life racing? I thought you did. Am I, wrong? I, did, I did. I raced. Was it two or three times this year? Right at uh, right at the end of the year, we uh, my motor had to get rebuilt, and a bunch of the parts were out on a ship in the middle of the sea, just uh, hanging out there for a while. So we didn't uh, 
get everything together, you know, towards till towards the end of the summer, last summer. So went out, had some more problems, carburetor problems, you know, little overheating issues, smaller stuff. But I think uh, they're the the last race. I think we pretty much got everything figured out for the most part. So, so uh, a question, when are you and Lacey going to get out on, uh, on the real asphalt and uh, have a go at each other? Yeah, yeah, that'd be nice. I wish he did uh, have a pavement car. Or I had a dirt car. Uh, yeah. That'd be nice. Nice yeah, yeah. too. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know if I can afford to race Lacey, though. To be honest with you, in real life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too funny. <laughs> so, so, anyways, we don't want to keep you because we don't. Well, you're out in the garage because everybody's sleeping inside, and you got an early morning. But we just wanted to uh, have you on to congratulate you on. Uh, on you know on, on the dominating charity win and uh we've got we've got a big one coming up uh you know we haven't announced too much about it but uh, uh i guess we could talk about it here the winter nationals it's going to be 305s 360s 358s and big blocks and uh i think right now uh, i'm talking out of school but uh we're talking about open 360s and open big blocks so that could be uh, uh a cool you know combination so anyways uh We'll uh, see how you you make out there with the with that one. So we'll see if you can win our winter nationals. We need to throw him some kind of curveball. Like we gotta, I we mean, gotta, yeah. give him something. He just can't. How about, come in and win? How about the three sixties? Uh, uh, it'll be open, but he's got to run fix. Yeah, okay, yeah. works for me. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But you could uh, Golder actually kind of went through a phase there where he was trying to do that every every Renegades race. He was just running the fix setup, seeing seeing how we could do and he actually did you know pretty uh well still so i was yeah, gonna but, uh, say blake blake has done the same thing and at yeah. least beat us and so that was enough for me to make me mad so yeah yeah i know it's just it, it, it's crazy you know when we get in the fixed, <coughs> the fixed divisions and you know the cream still rises to the top it's just uh you know it's not just uh magic setups you guys have it's you know there's definitely skill sets there so uh anyways yeah. uh you know, uh, good luck. Uh, you know, you're in a bit of a hole with the Renegades already, but uh, <laughs> it's just a challenge and see what you can do there. And, uh, um, you know, you, you, you've won it once before. I think just once before, right? You were a Renegades champion. I, I I had it in my head that you had won a few times, but I think I was getting confused with some of the charity events. Yeah, no, I've uh, won one Renegades, I think one Hometown Heroes, and then uh, one... What was it? I think we only ran one season of it. It was a sprint car uh, kind of series. Did you win Elite? I've yeah, yeah, I think so. I forget oh, what it was okay. called. It was it was uh, see, oh, man. It was the Osh Weekend series, series we did, where we had a qualifying uh, series beforehand. And maybe some, i'm not sure i just i remember like satterfield and a few of the yeah that would be that guys. elite that was the elite series that we yeah, did it was yeah. uncapped for, uh, g-force yeah okay yeah yeah the elite yeah. series yep yep that one so so oh so one last question before we go at uh, any chance of uh doing the pro run again you know you almost made it there a little while ago uh, I thought about it. I've thought about it. Um, I kind of thought about it again this year, but I didn't start. I rarely run, you know, the 410 stuff. Uh, yeah. It's kind of one of those you got to be, you know, be on top of your game. There's a lot of other people oh, yeah. you got to worry yeah. about. I was I was still a little uh, annoyed from from the year, you know, before just the, the couple races. You know, I was as close as I was, and I have – you know, two races that I still remember exactly, and and the people um, that I had. <laughs> that is and, uh, too, too bad they weren't that. out there. Too bad they weren't in the enduro tonight. <laughs> yeah, that, that is true. The the one actually used to run the league quite a bit, and I've still been keeping an eye out for that. So uh, we'll uh, <laughs> see if I can catch him on another another time. Yeah, so. yeah, I hear you, man. Anyways, thanks for coming on, buddy, and. Uh, <laughs> Again, congratulations and thanks for taking the time out because I know it's uh, you know it, it's late there and uh, you'll have to creep back in the house and try to be quiet. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. cool. Appreciate uh, having me on and and thanks for all the the races and the charity events. I uh, I enjoy those quite a bit. You know, it's uh, 
it's a good cause. Um, you know, raised quite a bit of money, like you said, the the twenty two thousand yeah. or whatever yeah. it was for a yeah. bunch of you call it cartoon racing. My yeah. wife called yeah. it fake racing. And, uh, <laughs> got, got that. So that's a that's a pretty cool deal, and uh, definitely yes. appreciate that. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, man, and uh, look forward to seeing you back on the track. Yeah. Congratulations. I look, I, I, look, I look forward to seeing you back in the next enduro. That's always fun. I'm always yeah. like 24. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Those are two. I was going for Dipmer's car tonight. A oh bit. yeah, a little more than than ever as well. Yeah, I didn't see his car till after the race, so he's on my list, the top of the list for next week. So, uh, anyways, okay. So, yeah. uh, thanks, buddy, and uh, we'll uh, we'll be talking to you down the road here. Sounds good. Hey, appreciate it. Yeah, you too. And we are honored tonight to have somebody really special on. We were talking, Preston, uh, it was about five or six episodes ago, at least, I think. We are talking about, uh, you know, I, I think there was a guy in Renegades or something who won like three in a row. Nobody's ever won like three in a row before. <laughs> yeah. and, then, and then when the, when the broadcast was over, he said, Bob Light. Bob Light's never lost. Have you ever lost a Roadrunner's race? We were just talking about that. Have you ever lost a Roadrunner's race? I, I have lost a couple, yeah. I noticed uh, two seasons ago, uh, you won fairly dominating fashion, but you had two incidents on the season. You must have gone off the track once. Do, do you remember when that happened? I I do remember that. Uh, there was a crash right in front of me, and I had to drive through the grass to miss it. <laughs> so it wasn't that. even his fault. <laughs> yeah, so, and you didn't even make contact. Uh, uh, yeah. No, didn't make contact. Just went, went, had an off track. No kidding, man. That's crazy. The other one, too, is you've been um, you've been highlighted on some of the broadcasts of the NASCAR stuff because uh, I know Patrick Morrison always goes back and, you know, how did Bob Light avoid that? And you seem to be able to drive through trouble. I seem to be able to find it, but it's... Uh, um, you, you, it, it's an amazing knack you've got there, and uh, the, the uh, you won the trucks uh, this past season. Uh, now you weren't out uh, Tuesday night. Do you plan on uh, running the trucks this season? Uh, actually, I was gonna just do Xfinity this time around. Oh, okay. So you'll be out on Thursday night, then. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that, I'm. I'm real. I'm real interested in that. Uh, that uh, Xfinity trail where they run all the tracks. That sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. 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 So sorry guys, all the, all you guys planned on running the Xfinity series. Well, guess what? Bob, Bob lights. I think we got a yeah. shot when we're going in circles, at least there's going to be more accidents in front of him at some point. So it, yeah, <laughs> maybe yeah. that gives us fun up there. I don't know. Yeah. The, you know, speed of light will be showing up, uh, on, the. Uh, Thursday nights. <laughs> so I want to rewind to something you were you were saying because I heard it. Um, it was a specific broadcast a couple of weeks ago where Patrick was talking about in the trucks. It was a, a pretty draft heavy track, but you seem to be laying back just a little bit. Was that specifically making sure you had room to avoid wrecks? Actually, no. That was saving fuel. That was late in the run. I saw that broadcast and heard him talking about that, but that was that was just fuel saving is all it was. Gotcha. Okay. Well, I was, and here I was feeling good because I passed Bob Light. Right <laughs> <laughs> he was pedaling it. Ah, uh, damn it. You ruined it on me. That was like the one night I qualified in front of a bunch of guys in, uh, I, I think it was in the, um, uh, the, the, the charity event, and... Uh, uh, then some uh, Clevenger ruined it for me by saying guys were sandbagging. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyways, uh, it's uh, it's all good. But uh, yeah, so you, you're you're going to run the uh, Thursday night uh, um, Xfinity series. <laughs> Had a blank moment there, and the Roadrunners. Uh, and, and we've got something coming up. And uh, I, I heard a rumor. Uh, we got 24 hours of Daytona. And I heard you got recruited. Is that true? I I did, and I'm looking so forward to that. I've always wanted to do something like that. I have I have no idea how the the team car thing works, but I'd love to try it. Well, yeah, I, it's we we've talked about it with the people on the, on here before, and I will tell you, I'm very excited to have you. Obviously, <laughs> we'll have some speed added to the team immediately. 
but it's <laughs> it is very very rewarding uh, e- even if you don't win just getting to the end and there is a like that element of teamwork at the end you feel it the most because you know for six seven hours you had to rely on somebody else and you didn't have any control so it's it's a lot of fun and it's a big bonding experience so i think it'll be good to get some guys from the league together to do it oh yeah i'm looking forward to that i think that'll be a blast yeah salty dogs are entering a team we're just our goal is just to be there at the end but i think i don't think you can get um disqualified for like incidents or anything you just have to keep doing uh pit run drive throughs yeah is that you, right? years ago i'm pretty sure um they did try disqualifications and something happened like there was a bug and a lot of people oh. got disqualified when they shouldn't or or it happened way early or something like that so now what they do is um there's an initial drive through at at some well, we'll call it 150 i think it's around there maybe 125 and then it's like every 25 incidents after it or something like that yeah. i don't know what the yeah. interval is I but thought it was a hundred, and then but every twenty-five or something. It, it could be. I I know it varies depending on the total duration of the race too. But yeah, so salty dogs will probably be at the hundred point somewhere early, and you guys, pressure's on you because you know Bob Light will not have incidents. So yeah, the rest of the driver is not well, to. Uh, somebody's gonna have to tell Bob Light that I will. Uh, <laughs> it's it's <laughs> a, a matter of managing the the quantity. So yeah, yeah. No problem. No, well, he might have to go on the grass to avoid some of the slower cars. Yeah, know. that's true. You know, <laughs> that's yeah. true. Yeah. So, where whereabouts are you from, Bob? Tell us a little bit about where you're from. Yeah, I I live in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Lived here my whole life. Uh, I got into i racing a couple of years ago, and I I specifically did it to do dirt racing because I was raised around dirt tracks here, and. Uh, I ran some open lobby stuff. I, I joined in 2020, I think, when the COVID got pretty bad, and they had the NASCAR guys on TV running sprint cars. And I thought, yeah. man, I got to do that. And Jeff Hayworth, that's in the league too, uh, introduced me to the Skip Barber cars. And I tried that, and I was hooked on that right away. So, yeah, that's crazy. Now, did you have a, an RC background, remote? remote uh, yeah. So do you still I, do that, or I, is no, it's been uh, probably two or three years since I ran. I did that solid for, oh, probably 20 years. Did a lot of traveling. Ran for a company called Trinity. And uh, just it seemed like every month I was going somewhere to race. And it, it, it became more of a job than a hobby. So uh, it took a lot of the fun out of it. But you you did win, a, a, well, from what I know, a national championship, right? At least one. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, seven altogether. Uh, only, I think, two of them are road racing and then three dirt oval, I think, and then a paved oval and a quarter-scale sprint car on dirt. So, all so Not even all the same all, discipline. All, all national championships? Uh, all national championships, yeah. Hey, let me ask you this, Bob. Have you ever lost in anything you've done? <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm teasing. Yeah. But... <laughs> hey, I tried, I tried dirt racing with you guys when I first joined the league, and I got my butt kicked bad. I just, I just don't have a knack for it. Well, you got a knack for asphalt, that's for sure, man. It's just uh, incredible. And we would like to see you back out in the dirt. It was good to see you kind of yeah. being normal, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not aggressive enough or something. I, I just get. It seems like every time there's a problem on the track, I'm in the middle. Yeah, you you had more incidents in one race than you had all season in the road race. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. So, did you ever come across some of the other guys in our league uh, in the RC, like Kevin Fry, or uh, I think it did more? Uh, yeah, I did. Yeah. Kevin and uh, uh, seems like there was somebody else. I've had a Moore? couple of guys ask me if I'm the same guy that used to race. It may have been Sean. Neistat, who was one of our broadcasters, but I know he was pretty involved in RC racing and had traveled some too. Yeah, most of most of the big events I went to were mid to late eighties. So, oh okay, uh, yeah. I did. I, I quit for about ten years in ninety three, and then started back in 04, and that's when I uh, when I met so, uh, some of the younger guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, are you old enough to be retreads? Are you there yet? 
Oh yeah, yeah. I'm 63. So. Oh man, how come we don't? Oh, you're still working. Yeah, I'm still working. I ran with you guys. Oh, a couple of times when I was off work, but yeah. But then he feels bad doing that yeah. while I'm working. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it's interesting. The retreads. We're getting like 13, 14 guys out for the races now. It's it's building and. Uh, I think there's like 30 or 40 guys in there. I think a, a lot of them still work, but uh, that's a, it's it's uh, it's getting to be uh, it's growing. So uh, y'all should be looking at some sort of 401k sponsor, right? Because all these guys hear about yeah. y'all racing in the middle of the day. Y'all could be really pumping that. Yeah, yeah, or Geritol or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Well, so uh, I saw yeah, the that's... picture of you guys uh, having breakfast this morning. That was really cool. It's cool to put a face with the voices I hear in chat. Yeah, it, it is cool that way, and uh, we're looking, yeah. uh, we're working on something uh, big for the uh, the summer. So I don't want to mention it yet because I gotta make make a few final uh, things. But uh, some we might have a major meet and greet this summer, so stay tuned for that. And would love to see you uh, at that secret spot. <laughs> so, so, so yeah, before be cool. we let. Before we let you go, Bob, one, one thing, and this is really for my own curiosity's sake, but obviously they've released a new build now, and you've been running GT3s with us for a little bit. Yeah. What do you what do you think about the changes that they made? And and in light of, and it's something I've noticed you do, not everybody has does this, but some guys do. Will switch cars from track to track. Do you, does that still seem necessary to you? Like I just generally speaking, I think you have more knowledge on it than I do. Yeah, I haven't run the new build enough yet to know if there's a, a lot of difference in the cars. I know before the update, uh, there were some tracks where the McLaren was just the best car and some where the Ferrari was the best car. Yeah. And Jeff and I would get on and practice a couple of hours, and we'd go through the cars and, and find the one that suited us best. But this new build, uh, man, it's, they're a lot harder to handle. I mean, it's a lot more throttle control. Yeah. The Ferrari was just way too much at the at the Lime Lime Rock or wherever we ran the first one. I bought but, the uh, Porsche I specifically because <laughs> I've been running the Ferrari. I've been sticking with it because I was the only one I owned, and I went out and bought the Porsche just because the Ferrari was too bad at Lime Rock. So, yeah, I had to switch. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a. I think it's going to be good. I I hope people give it enough time they they get used to the car because it's a it's a big change. I mean, at first I couldn't even get around the track, but it's a it's a lot more throttle control. Yeah, I think it'll make it a little bit racier too. I just generally because of, there's going to be more maybe smaller mistakes because I do it to me it felt a little easier to catch the car probably because it's heavier. Um, but yeah, it, it's sliding around a whole lot more. So hopefully that's more passing and all that good stuff. You mean yeah, I'm gonna? Yeah, I'm gonna... I think you're right. You mean I'm going to have to practice for the 24 hours? Yeah, you're absolutely going to have to practice. <laughs> well, you do what you want, but I will practice. <laughs> well, yeah, hopefully I can get in a session with you guys and you can shed some light on how to drive those things. <laughs> yeah, I know a guy. <laughs> Anyways, buddy, uh, it, just like you said, it's good to put a, a face to uh, a name. And uh, we've been wanting to have you on here for a, a long time. We've, we've talked about this for, for well we've tried a couple times and it just didn't we couldn't connect yeah but uh well, right roger just because it's the first time we've had bob on i think we need to go through our questions just oh absolutely just yes. because i don't want to i don't want to yes. leave before we do that so, you, so go ahead you do the honors so yeah my question always is that your your favorite eye racing memory oh god probably winning the first uh the the first Skip Barber race I won, I think it was the second or third week. Bobby uh, Rafferty beat me, I think, the first two weeks, and I finally won one when he didn't show up. So that that was probably my best memory. Was it? Is that in the Roadrunners? Was that in Roadrunners? That was or Roadrunners. That was that was the first uh, year I joined the league. That first season was uh, Roadrunners, uh, or I'm sorry, Skip Barber in the Roadrunners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which so, I think was our first season. Probably no, the only we, we didn't. Re- we was. didn't. We didn't do road run. Oh, oh, you mean the first season of Road Runners? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. So, so he's he's lost two races. He just admitted. Yeah. To Rafferty. <laughs> I, I know. I know. Uh, Dan McLaren beat me one time, and uh, uh, somebody else got me once. I can't remember exactly who it was, but 
Yeah, it's, it's going to be tough this year, though, with that car. I mean, Zach was right on me for a long time uh, the other night until he took too much fuel on the pit stop and and lost some, some ground. But it's going to be tough. Okay, I'm going to put you on the spot. Okay. A, a couple of top tips for uh, running uh, road racing because uh, I suck. So what would it, it did, <laughs> so what would what would be your like two things to say like what should I do to improve my driving? I think the the biggest thing that I see a lot of people do is they just go into the corner too hard. And I know when somebody's right behind you, it's it's hard to back off early, but slow in, fast out is 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 the key in in road racing. And try not to get back to the throttle until you can stay in it. If you have to let up again because you you. You got on it too soon, that'll kill you. Yeah. Uh, when when you're practicing in road runners, do you ever feel a presence or anything? Just asking, because and where I'm gonna, I'll go with that. Is uh, every race I go in now, the best thing I can do is I sit in Bob Light's car and watch his gear <laughs> oh. changes and where he's where he's downshifting his braking points, and uh, you know and. It helps me a little bit. I mean, <laughs> but at least I get an idea of uh, where the gear change. I shouldn't be telling people that because then I'll, everybody will be. Yeah, that's going to be a crowded car before the season's over. <laughs> that's that's cool. I've done that plenty of times myself. Yeah, I think that's actually, especially in iRacing, and that's a really good strategy because you, that's the yeah. you're less likely to go out and cost somebody else something by doing that. So if you get there and you know generally where other guys are breaking, even if it's right or wrong. At least you know what to expect. So I, I, I think I, that's a great strategy for everybody. I I'll be I'll I'll fess up here. Like if a practice session is say half an hour, I might spend ten to fifteen minutes of that in Bob's cockpit because I am learning more sitting in his car than I would trial and error doing it myself. So and then I'll go out for the last few laps and try to you know duplicate some parts of it you know there's some parts where he'll go right down to first gear where i wouldn't have thought of doing that or or some turns where he he doesn't gear down as much as i thought and and he's you know carrying the speed so um and, and then usually by like uh qualifying you know i i can make it around the track without crashing and get, you know get one lap registered so. <laughs> so so i haven't asked my question yet so i'm gonna yes. hold bob hostage for a second yes but ha have either of you tried the new active reset like in a practice session yet I have. I, I, I used it quite a bit uh, last week. Uh, what I, I, I can't even pronounce that track we were at last week. It's got a big, long, long uh, name. Rut, Rutsked, the, Rutsked, never mind. Yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah, I can't either. That's yeah, the one. That's yeah, the one, yeah. yeah. You know which one I'm talking about. But it has the long uh, straightaway that has that real high-speed right-hand turn. And I use that oh, active yeah. reset a lot, just driving into that turn to see how fast you could actually go. And it, it helped a lot. Oh, okay. I, yeah, I'm going to have to try it. I hadn't had a chance yet, but I was wondering how much... I, is the load time relatively short between runs? Oh, it's it's instant. I mean, as soon as it, as soon as you map a button and set your starting point, is when you hit that button, it's instantly there. In fact, it's so fast, a lot of times you've got to catch it. You know what I mean? Yeah, okay. Cool. Cool. I'm going to have That's to try cool. that. Yeah. You didn't ask your question yet either, Preston. Yeah, I know. I did that on purpose okay. so I could ask ask yeah. my tip questions. So, so yeah. in, in fairness, this is probably the most difficult question for you over anybody else. But who would you say is your biggest rival in in our league? Uh, I I would say the the fastest guy that I've run across is Dan McLaren. Yeah, I yeah, I mean, especially in the NASCAR stuff, like yeah, he was, a, he stuff. had a few weeks where he was absolutely unbeatable. Um, but yeah, you, you mentioned too, he beat you in Roadrunner, so uh, yeah, that's probably yeah, the best he, answer you could pick. He, he he's tough. I mean, I've looked at the back of that guy's car in NASCAR more than anybody <laughs> I've ever run with. He's just he's just good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it, it's he's he misses a lot because of work, I think. But he's always right up the front. You know, yeah. there's there's a few names you know yeah. are going to be up there, and uh, and Bob Light's one of them. It's just unbelievable. He's transferred all that skill set, and uh, I need to follow you so I can get through some of those wrecks. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, but anyways, buddy, it's it's been great having you on. I really appreciate you taking the time. And uh, just, you know, really appreciate being in the league. It's funny, you know, like 
normally if a guy was this dominant, people would hate him, you know. And uh, I don't know any, any anybody that has nothing but respect for you. And I don't think anybody gets offended the fact that you're as dominant because you're just you're smooth and uh, a gentleman on the track. And uh, uh, a credit to the league for sure. So, well, uh, you motivate guys. I have a couple of younger guys on my on my team yeah. who they talk about. Oh, all right, tonight's tonight. I'm going to beat Bob Light. You know, so <laughs> we we laugh about that because that's it, you got a target on your back. But you know, it's good stuff. Yeah. Well, that that that's great to hear. I mean, that uh, that's all I ever wanted in racing is respect, and I like to I like to race people clean, and and uh, you know, no, the, none of the call outs and stuff like that. That's just all. I just love to have fun, and this league is perfect for what I like to do. Yep. Well, we're, which we're, is we're, win. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're really happy to have you, man. And uh, like I say, you're a credit to the league, and uh, uh, proud to have you as one of our defending champions. For sure. So uh, thanks for coming on, and, and right. we'll we'll be talking to you at the end of the NASCAR season, probably. All right. right. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Okay. Take care. Good seeing you, Bob. All right. Yeah. yeah so it was it was great to catch up with both of those guys. I you know we've talked to Kyle a couple of times, but it, it was it was nice getting to talk to Bob. Um, it. Yeah. Doesn't make it any easier getting beat by him every week, though. I thought it might, but it doesn't. But you know, uh, it, what what amazed me was uh, I don't think he's done a lot of NASCAR racing, and he was just so so dominant, like it's quietly dominant, I'll call it, because it's not like he's out front and just leads the whole thing. He he, he places himself in strategic positions. Yeah, and uh, it's brilliant the way he. He races and drives. It, so it's it's something that I've been talking about with my guys that are a little bit greener, and it's exactly what Bob Light does every time he's on track: is you protect your race. Whatever move you make should be protecting your race, and he's very very good at that. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean that's he's a strategy guy for sure. So I'm looking forward and, to having him on the 24 hour team. And, and a delight to have in the league. You know, he just he's an awesome dude. You know, and I, I don't think there's anybody that has a dislike or anything for, for Bob Light. There's, you know, there's, 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 everybody has a couple of numbers written down. I don't think anybody has Bob's number written down, you know, just Agreed. other than, other than he's the guy to beat, right? So, yeah, try yeah, to keep uh, up with that guy. Yeah, yeah, to keep up with that guy. But yeah, it, it was great to finally catch up to Bob. We've tried a few times and it just didn't work out. So, uh, and, uh, yeah, it was cool. And, and Moon and, Moon is Moon and, and uh, you know, he's, He's always a cool, cool dude to talk to, and uh, just so so dominant in the charities. Like that's just crazy. He's won five of them. It's just uh, that's nuts. Yeah, it, it really is kind of disproportionate. I mean, he's obviously very. He's run good in everything else. He's run. He's perennially at the top at you know in Renegades, but yeah, only yeah. won the one. So to have won five charity events, and I don't even think that they were all necessarily sprint cars. Um, so that's that's really saying something. Yeah, I mean, this one right. was an overall. So you're right. It, I think or the one, the one was, previous. Uh, yeah, one was a dirt mod or something. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, it's crazy. So uh, no, yeah, kudos to him, and uh, you know, a credit to the league for sure. So so talking about you know generally our our sprint car stuff, we we tried something new this past Monday with the individual yeah. qualifying and renegades, and uh, there was mixed emotion about that. Is I guess the best way to put it. Yeah, so you know we're always trying new things. Uh, you know we've got the the uh, two guys advancing to the the feature, and we're still you know we're 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 going to run that for a few more weeks at least, just to see how that plays out. Um, but it, it, I think it does add it, it decreases the sandbagging. Um, we did want to do we you know with the Renegades we had the individual qualifying, lot lots of uh, you know it, it's technically very challenging. Yeah. And uh, we've been really fortunate. Usually, when we take on something technically challenging, it it works out. Um, we didn't do any dry runs. That was pretty much it. And yeah, it it didn't go well. Uh, earlier today in the cup uh, matinee, we tried it again. Didn't go well. Uh, I think it's just too technically challenging. Uh, and and there's the time. You know, you, even even if you condense it, you're getting it into like 15, 15 to twenty minutes probably. Uh, which is a long time for qualifying in your train, you know. World of Outlaws, if I'm watching, I'm enjoying their qualifying. But, you know, 
for us, you know, to sit around for 20 minutes. And there were issues. There, there was issues with uh, drivers couldn't see other drivers. And anyway, so we've abandoned that for now. And, uh, you know, we'll evaluate. We, we've also been looking at, uh, you know, random, random starting with no qualifying. But uh, maybe that's something for next season or week 13 and see where that goes. But uh, I know uh, Brendan Lacey did some work on that earlier today, uh, setting up some sessions and, and getting that to work. So um, lots, lots of stuff like that going on in the background. Everybody's trying to make things better. Um, uh, on Hometown Heroes, you know, trying to squeeze in the four tens to that. So, uh, as a result of that, we got four sessions, um, and tonight was, uh, you know, left a few things to be desired. It was, it was a new track, a technically difficult track, a Lincoln, but a, but a super track. I, it, it's super popular. It might not have been after tonight, but what what we did was uh, we just went from qualifying and a feature, and. Um, and, and by doing that, and I'm not sure if I can change that uh, unless we just manually said, okay, the top 24 only transfer. Uh, we took everybody. And in the case of the 305s, I think there was 30 guys on a pretty short track. Yeah. So, you know, we, we the first five laps, we had five cautions. Because that, that first turn is, uh, well, we talked to Moonen about it. It's a challenge. And if you haven't had many practice laps, you know, and it's it was like starting NASCAR. Everybody's gung ho to get in there, and you know that's not how you get around that corner. So uh, a great track. I love the track, and we will improve. Uh, I got some ideas for next week, so uh, it won't just be a, like a qualify race. Uh, we're going to try to work a few heats in, and uh, and still stay within the the, the three hour, you know, target. So um, uh, Travis. Piercefield and Extreme East TV did a phenomenal job tonight uh, covering all of that. And, uh, you know, the, the, it moved well between sessions. I don't know. I've had some messages from Travis since the uh, since the, uh, uh, the the Enduro race. That was his first exposure to it. And he just felt him. He just loved it. He just thought it was the greatest thing he'd ever. And, and you could tell with uh, the parts. I, I got to go back and watch it up fully, but I had to broadcast on it. And he was loving it, so it was uh, it was a fun night. You know, it's a, it's always a great night to, a great way to f finish off a night. So, well, and and I think you've you've just made a good contrast, right? Because so we tried something new on Monday, and it, it didn't go th the way we wanted stick. it to. Yeah, it didn't you know, stick. it just right, exactly. Yeah. And then we tried something new, you know, tonight, which Wednesday, and and it went exactly how we expected it to, and we're going to tweak it. So I I know. Especially at the beginning of the season, some of these things can be frustrating. The race took a little too long Monday. Yep. I, we get it, trust me, and we want your feedback, but don't get but so frustrated with us. We, we're not going to be scared to try new things. That's kind of how we've gotten where we are is trying yep. to do things differently than everybody else. So sometimes they're going to work and sometimes they're not. Um, so I guess politeness is the best we can ask for, but we do want your feedback. So um, don't shy away from that. Just remember... Yep. We we probably un have an understanding that it didn't go as well as we wanted it to. You know. I think the other one too is uh, something I wanted, to, and I, uh, there'll be a post on this anyways. Is you know we talk about mother's rules. You know, if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. Uh, that applies not only in the race chat, but that applies to um, social media. It it applies to your interviews. Like we're trying to promote the league, and yeah, we're fumbling in a few spots, but um, those are not the uh, the places to to uh, you know to, to vent that and uh reach out to us you know we're always listening uh and um and, and trying to make things better so uh you know just uh just keep that in mind i guess yeah and and particularly the youtube channel and and it's one that's not policed as actively you know obviously we don't see things during the race necessarily because we're all busy with other duties or racing or that kind of thing. But, um, you know, I, I don't want to tell you not to make comments there because that's a great way to kind of interact with people that may not be racing with us. Um, but that's not a place to vent your uh, frustrations about an incident, whether you're calling a guy out or not. It's it's a place to go and be positive. You know, that's if you're going to have interactions with fans, you know, however you look at that, that's where it's going to be. So um, we, we need to keep all those message messages excuse me, message is relatively positive. Um, it's not a matter of you necessarily said anything wrong, but it's part of the broadcast at that point. So we want to put on a good show in that sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and there's avenues like, you know, if you're upset you got 10 incidents in a race, 
then protest the guys. You know, that's the avenue to do it, not social media to, to vent that out there because it's just, it, it's not a positive look on the league and we're trying our best to, uh, you know, to, to promote the league and show our best face. So, so speaking of showing our best face, what do you think, eh? I just, these just came in. I finally got these uh, embroidered hat, embroidered shirt. I was very impressed with the accuracy of the embroidery. Uh, that was one thing I always kind of regretted when I designed that logo is um, how fine some of the details were, but they absolutely no. nailed it. They killed it. I, I, I couldn't be happier with uh, the way these turned out. I also got a couple of shirts, T-shirts done, so uh, I may model one of those uh, next week as well. So, um, it, yeah, it was cool. That, that was My wife and I have no idea what to get each other for Christmas and you know, my birthday coming up. And I just said, "This is I've been wanting to get one of these like for a year, two years." And uh, so, yeah, this this is it, man. It, it doesn't get you know when you get to be an old guy like me. This this is this is it. This is the well, best you get. You got you got president or something embroidered on the back there. No, you no president. You no. Something. I should have a target on my back. Is what I should, Very, well, I should that's have. A great big target. <laughs> or you just uh, you just get a protest form. Uh, filed back yeah. or you know printed back yeah. there it work out too yeah 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 no it's um th things are going good you know yeah we we tried a couple but for the most part everybody uh was patient with us and um you know uh, the the qualifying was a great idea it's just and i know uh dirty old bastards do it and pull it off uh you know i was going to reach out to them and i just thought why are we bringing all this like it's just it's it's really taxing on the admins so yeah uh, you know let's not uh let's not even just go there let's let's, let's move on and uh you know um there's so much good racing you know monday night uh the racing is so good it's especially renegades week after week it's just it's just awesome so and we had some great car counts tonight which caused some of the issues but you know we had like almost 30 cars for the 305s like the league is just exploding and you know we, we've talked about the the nascar stuff you know it's We've got guys joining up every week, both sides, dirt and asphalt. And uh, it, it's just, you know, I, I love the dirt. The, the, the dirt is, that will always be a dirt league. We will always be a dirt league. But it, it's just added one new dimension. And uh, the car counts are crazy. We had two volunteers for Tuesday night. Um, Dustin uh, Reinstedel and uh, Brandon uh, Ishkanian. Uh, did a great job. Uh, they're they're dedicated to admitting those races. Uh, they they're using a new app called iRace Control, and uh, I, I thought it came off well. You know, um, Moonen got caught in that black flag, which normally nobody would have known why he got a black flag. He didn't know why he got the black flag, and they could go back and they you know while you're doing 59 miles an hour and it's supposed to be 55 or whatever. It's kind of like, oh, and, and and you know Kyle just said, oh okay, but like you know. Any other time, we probably wouldn't have known those things. Just so well, um, and you, I, you get why that's less frustrating. Well, I got an answer now. It's not. Yep. I mean, even, it's still yep. frustrating. But what yep. are you going to do with it, right? So it helps. And, and you know, when we we've said no blacks cleared because we wanted to keep things simple. But uh, I know on Tuesday nights, especially um, these guys are. You know, they intend on being there every every week, and their skill sets are such that uh, you know not. Uh, we may start looking at reviewing some of the blacks that, you know, the when there's a, a car dragging behind. They, they've come up with ideas, too. I know uh, they both come from uh, other leagues and lots of experience, and we're, we're tapping into that. Um, so if a guy's damaged and moving slow, just give him an EOL. Then nobody gets black flagged. Brilliant. Didn't even think of that. So it, it, they're, they're doing a great job. And, and we we should have a guideline, a NASCAR guideline released uh hopefully by the end of this week, which, which is good for some of the new newbie guys. But, uh, no, the dirt stuff is, uh, you know, it, we had, um, the 18 out for the four tens on Tuesday night in that, like I call it the wingless division, even though that four tens are in there, uh, 18 for the pro late models. So we're, you know, we're getting the car and, and I know tomorrow night now that we've got the uh, big blocks back with, uh, three fifty eights where they belong. Uh, I'm really looking forward to car counts. I know there's three or four guys trying to sign up for that uh, earlier today. So, uh, think, yeah, things are going. And speaking of signing up, uh, your dues. This yeah. is Sunday. Bill said the deadline was Saturday. Uh, we'll be extending that to Sunday midnight. Uh, so if you're watching this broadcast uh, when it's put out on Sunday, 
if you haven't signed up, get signed up because Trigger Finger Bill, I'm telling you, he's just itching to delete. He just he's, he's got you on a list. He's he, just waiting to click the button. Yeah, uh, uh, yes, yeah, so like Santa Claus got you on the list, but, but like he'll he'll crash out and and be glad to add you back again later. Like, but it's just I don't I've known Bill 50 years, and uh, I'm I'm just saying he enjoys this shit. So don't don't give him any excuses. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So anyways, uh yeah, that I don't know is there anything else we want to touch on? Is we're I, trying to I don't think so. I mean, we're we're our season's just kind of off to a flying start here. Yeah. We we didn't change a ton really. This is probably one of the um lighter changes as far as start of a season goes for us in a long time, but um you know, always have those few wrinkles that we get to try some new stuff and see what happens. So uh, yeah. I think we touched on most of the major stuff, at least. Yeah, I, and I'm looking forward to, to next week. And uh, just, uh, yeah, the, the league is better than it's, you know, in a better position than it's ever been. It's, it's continuing to grow and flourish. And uh, if we have an issue, it's with car counts. Like, <laughs> that we got too many cars in some of these divisions. So I really think great, Thursdays great are going to be an issue. Because, like, you're talking about yeah. the, the 358s and big blocks are, are back together, which will draw people. Yeah. And then yes. they're just going to stick around for NASCAR, and we're going to have like fifty some guys register. Oh, yeah. That's that's my guess. Yeah. I'm I put the over under at fifty. We'll see. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, you know, and we'll mention uh, that you know there will be an A and a B division of uh, NASCAR uh, at, at towards the end of the season. We'll talk about that maybe on the next podcast. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure, we'll get so, into uh, that. Yeah. So, uh, anyways, buddy, uh, got got a, a bunch of things coming down the pipe that we'll. We, we've got lots to talk about, uh, you know, down the road. So, uh, in the meantime, just get out on the track and run because it's uh, it's dynamite. And uh, and I'm loving Lincoln Speedway. I, you know, it hasn't been all that nice to me, but uh, and it, and it's it's great for enduros. There's <laughs> yeah, I so, gotta go try. It. I haven't run there yet, so I, that's actually as soon as we uh, finish this up, that's what I'm gonna go do is try to turn uh, some laps there. Connor Ross was leading with one lap to go, and he was like three laps up on everybody. And somebody just got, just tagged him just as he was going for the white flag. So he had he had to go in for a repair. So everybody caught up, and I think when he came out, somebody nailed him again. Poor Connor. I think I hope his knee's okay. You know, he just had that yeah. surgery on his yeah. knee, and uh, but he almost won it. But uh, yeah, it was, it was a great show. It was a great show. So hopefully, you know, if you did, if you weren't out this week, come on out next week. And next week we're at Lernerville, so I don't know if there will be a, a a tip off count or whatever. But uh, that, that's a whole different dimension on that track with this thing. So who knows what's going to happen? I, I'm going to try to get out for that one. I think there are some unique strategies that you can take there. So uh, we'll yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah. But that's all, all I'm going to say. All I know is if you saw Brandon Dittmer's car this week, and luckily I never saw it till the end of the race. Brandon Dittmer, I'm coming for you, buddy. All the salty dogs, there's a bounty out for you in this next race. So you better have your head up. So I think on that note, we'll go ahead and close <laughs> episode 79 of the Pit Side Podcast. We appreciate you guys watching. Um, we we are generally moving to an every other week schedule for the podcast. It's still going to fluctuate a little bit here and there. Um, but generally speaking, when we, when we sign off, we'll see you in two weeks. And uh, same same here. So uh, we'll see yeah. you. Uh, should be right around Christmas. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, we're around our birthdays. Yeah, that's true too. Yeah, that's yeah, true too. We'll up. have the birthday episode. Somebody can we'll birthday, somebody come yeah. on and present us things. That's that's yeah. what we'll have to do. <laughs> Give us presents. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> drive, drive safe, everybody. Have a good one, guys. <laughs>